Hi, welcome to Transform Life Church. In a few moments, we'll be joining the service already in progress. If you're joining us for the first time, I'm glad that you're here with us. I pray that today's message will be a great blessing to you. So don't go anywhere. I'll be back in a moment to share some next steps with you. Yes, yes, yes. It's great to be in the house of the Lord. Well, today we are on the third part of our four-part series. And our series is under my umbrella, the parenting series. And today we're going to be looking at discipline. Now, discipline, by definition, is the act of training someone to obey rules or a code of behave, behavior, using punishment to correct disobedience. Now, when we respond correctly to discipline, you know, the, the correction, it produces a disciplined life. And we know that a disciplined life makes all the difference in the world. A disciplined life in a child produces so many long-term benefits. For example, it helps them to become focused. They are more respectful, and they even gain the respect of others. Research has shown that a disciplined child is also healthier. It causes them to have um, better performance academically, reduces stress and tension. They are more self-controlled. And of course, as believers, when your child is disciplined, you are helping them to operate in a way that leads them into the ultimate goal, which is our eternal life with our Lord and Savior. So this is a very important topic. If we properly apply discipline to our children and they grow to be disciplined individuals, we are literally setting them up to have a secure future. So this morning we will be looking at why we discipline our children and we'll also be considering how we discipline them. Now, we just read um, a chapter 12, most of it from Hebrews. And this chapter has in some really special gems, some points which tells us why we discipline. And it also tells us what constitutes good discipline. Well... Pastor Jonah and myself are no experts in the area, but we're sharing with you this godly principle mm -hmm. about it. And as parents, especially modern parents, many of us are struggle with discipline. What is the right way? Many of us say things like, my parents did it in a way that I didn't like, so we are determined to do it in another way. As a matter of fact, some of us just refuse to discipline at all. But it is spilling over in our society. When we look in our society, we see the fruit of bad discipline or the lack of discipline. We see the mayhem and just inappropriate behavior. I was in Ocho Rios the other day, and, and there was a line of traffic. And someone decided that he couldn't wait. So he went over on the right soft shoulder because he was not disciplined. disciplined. You see, we see it in our nation's children. We see it in our schools, just this, this lack of discipline. And we see it in some of the parents, just a lack of discipline. As a matter of fact, some parents, if you attempt to discipline your, their children, they come to... Discipline you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then we look in our workplaces. We see some of the people, some of the workers, the way they operate is just a lack of discipline. A lack of discipline or an undisciplined life most times can be traced back to childhood. Mm -hmm. It's just void of godly discipline. And at the, at the core of it, discipline is about training. That's why the scripture says this, Proverbs 22. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old, he will not depart from it. The truth is we struggle with disciplining, doing it the right way for the right reason, in the right circumstance. But despite that, we are still required to train our children and to train them in the right way. But you may ask, what does that look like? Well, I'm glad you asked. 
Now, let me show you. Let's look at the perfect parent and see how he does it. And of course, the perfect parent is our godly father. You know, when I was preparing for this, I was talking to me and I said, Lord, you know that this discipline thing, it can be challenging, it's not easy. And he says, yes, I know. On your own, it's going to be hard. He says, therefore, this is why I invite you to come to me. And he says, I will give you rest. I will give you rest in your parenting. And I will give you rest in your decision on discipline. He said, look to me and see how I parent my children. How I discipline them. And he says, follow me. And the major thing he, remind, he, he said is that he's a God of love. He is love. So his method of parenting is always going to be done through love. And his discipline will always reflect who he is. So let's jump in. Let's look at the Hebrews passage. And from it, we're going to be pulling four major principles this morning. And the first one we want to share with you is that all children must receive discipline. Amen. And when we say children there, yes, we're talking about the little ch the children that we have. But the truth is, it's also talking about me because I'm also a child of God. Amen. So while our children must be parented, we need, me, must be disciplined, we must also be disciplined too. Let's look at verse 5 to 8. And it says, My child, don't make light of the Lord's discipline. And don't give up when he corrects you. For the Lord disciplines those he loves and he punishes each one he accepts as his child. As you endure his divine discipline, remember that God is treating you as his own children. Whoever heard of a child who is never disciplined by his father? If God doesn't discipline you as he does all his children, it means that you are illegitimate and are not really his children at all. So discipline is necessary. Even God does it. Discipline is to produce a disciplined life, a godly life, to secure eternity. So the first one is that all children must accept and receive discipline. The second one is no rocket science. Discipline is painful. No discipline is enjoyable while it is happening. It is painful. Discipline is getting the, 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 the child to, to correct his or her action. And the truth is that it's not painful. It is not to be abusive. It is, it is painful. It is painful. It mm. is not to be abusive. But the truth is that there is some amount of pain involved. It is motivating to go against what comes naturally. In other words, by that I mean that Every child has a sinful nature. How many people in the room know that you don't have to teach a child how to do wrong? <laughs> that just comes naturally. And what we are doing is bending the tree so that the tree will, will, will go in the direction that you want it to go. And as we bend the tree, we have to realize that trees have limits too. Everybody with me? Mm-hmm. You don't, want to, you don't want it to be so acute that it damages the limb. How many people are gardeners here? Okay, all right. All right, so, so when you want a tree to grow in a particular way, a lot of times you tie the tree, but you don't tie it in an acute. You tie it so that it starts to be trained to go in a different way. And it's the same with our children. We want their behavior to change. We want, why we love them? We have to discipline them. And discipline is just uncomfortable. Number three, write this down. I have to discipline my child. Discipline is for the child's benefit, not for my benefit. Not for my own. And this sounds like a, a really strange thing to say. But what I've observed over the years is that I've found many times that the, the discipline that we as parents do sometimes is not even about them. And what do I mean by that? The, the child does something, and our response to the child's behavior, it, it is more how their actions affect us and not about training them to do something. <laughs> so you're in the middle of the supermarket, and the child throws a tantrum. 
So you get embarrassed. Nobody. <laughs> and it is out of the embarrassment that you are trying to correct the child, but it's not about teaching the child. It's about, it's about saving yourself. Nobody. All right. <laughs> you see, as parents, we can't be too focused on what I am doing mm -hmm. when it comes to our children. My schedule, my world, my priority. When we do it, it becomes harder to respond to them as God would have us respond to them. You see, Sometimes our discipline really is just about protecting our reputation or the reputation of our families. And, and when we do it in that way, it causes us to say and do things that we often regret that we have done. You know, while I was preparing, I remembered a statement that my mom used to make. She used to say, death before dishonor. So you guys know that statement? And the death there is not her death. <laughs> and what she's saying is somebody is going to die before, before she gets shame in the community so there is no latitude to fail in a way that's going to cause her shame so when we as children did something wrong Erica it's not true <laughs> the discipline <laughs> The discipline is harsh and sharp. It said, don't you go there again. And then, no, you have some household that would experience that. But what would make it worse is that there was little training as to what was right or wrong. We used to get that training. We knew what was right or wrong. My mother took, and father took the time to, to teach us. But in those, those households where, where they were taught what is right or wrong, it even get worse. Yeah, well done. So I know people in, them, in their adulthood, anytime discipline comes up, it's like they can't think properly. Yeah. That's the kind of environment that causes that. Yeah. So yeah. When, when correction comes up, they sort of go into a default and they just, they just lose all. Yeah. So that's the kind of environment yeah. that raises yeah. that. Got you. But that is, discipline is about the parent. <laughs> What's that now? Got you. Got you. We don't see what I live with, right? <laughs> but in that case, it is more about the parent than the child. But godly discipline is different. Yeah. Godly discipline is for my child's good. And the verse says, but godly discipline is always good for us so that we might share in his holiness. It's about the child and their good. It is not about parents. Therefore, before you discipline, stop and think. What good will my child get from this? Check. Will the discipline I'm about to do in this situation help my child to grow in holiness and live a more disciplined life? The text says, Godly dis discipline should motivate us to share in his holiness. So, lambasting the child in anger and rage is not for the child's good. Research shows that yelling at children and using words to cause emotional pain or shame is ineffective and harmful. Harsh verbal discipline can lead to more misbehavior and mental health problems in children. Lambasting the child in anger is not for the child's good. It is satisfying your frustration. And it will not lead the child to share in God's holiness. In fact, it more than likely will cause them to walk away from the Heavenly Father. And I'm, based on even my situation growing up, it was a Christian home where discipline was so abusive, you end up aligning that with God. And so as soon as you can, you can't wait to leave. And what you find end up happening is that you also walk away from the Lord. That discipline did not produce, produce holiness. It produced anger and confusion. I was bruised and wounded. I became fearful and stressed. Then this leads to the fourth point. In that my short-term discipline should prepare my child for a God-ordered life. 
godly discipline from parents set the tone for their children to submit to God's long-term discipline, long discipline and leadership. You remember in the first sermon. sermon of the series, Pastor Dwight made a point. He said, a parent's priority is to gradually transfer a child's dependence away from the parent until their dependence rests solely on God. So pretty much the, the discipline that you are carrying is carrying them to be godly children. Right? At the core of it is leading them to a godly life, a self-controlled life, a life worthy to be called a child of God. And good discipline sort of starts with the parents and ends with God. Because after you become and you, you transition away from your parents, God will still be your parent. But when he disciplines us, that we can respond properly. You see, when, when we live in this way, it produces, that is discipline, produces a peaceful harvest of right living. The scripture says, there will be a peaceful harvest of right living for those who are trained in this way. It is training you to live in a way where you get a harvest. There is a benefit to you. And the benefit includes right living. Mm -hmm. Then, discipline creates a disciplined life. This is a life that shows God's righteousness. This is a life that shows structure. This is a life that, that starts here but, but moves into eternity. This is a life that can stand the refiner's fire. And this is what Hebrews 12, 18 to 29 is warning us about. Verse 27 says, All creation will be shaken and removed so that only unshakable things will remain. We want to train our children to be strong in the Lord and disciplined in the Lord so that when the time of reckoning comes, they are unshakable. Is everybody with me? Yes. The unshakable things are the kingdom of God. All the things that, that come by and through Christ. And as parents, our mission is to have children that will go on to eternity. Therefore, we must train them to go after eternity. We have to train them to live a disciplined life. And this produces strength and resilience for the long haul. We have to train them to be oaks of righteousness. You see, being an oak of righteousness, righteousness doesn't come automatically. It requires training. I read about an experiment where they, they took some, some pine trees and they shielded the pine trees from the winds of, of life. So the pine trees grew up in a very serene environment. They, they said once the pine trees reached about 10 feet, the pine trees would break in the middle because they just did not experience life. They, they had some other, so you know you have the test and you have the other one. So they had some others that just went through the regular things in life. And these pine trees just continued to grow tall. Why? Because the winds, the contrary winds, strengthened the, the, what do you call it? the trunk, right? The roots were deeper. The trees themselves were healthier. If we want our children to be able to last a distance, we have to use discipline to train them so that they become strong, so that they can last long and go the distance. Are you with me? Amen. So if we're talking about children, look at verse 16 to 17 of the same passage where it spoke about Esau. And it gives a strong admonition against immoral or godless life caused by indiscipline. And you know, you need to remember that this passage is within the context of discipline. So it showed what a lack of resilience and discipline can do. Let's, let's look at it. It says, make sure that no one is immoral or godless like Esau, who traded his birthright as the firstborn son for a single meal. You know that afterwards, when he wanted his father's blessing, he was rejected. It was too late for repentance, even though he begged with bitter tears. Esau had little discipline. He scoffed at the blessing of his first, as for the firstborn. For what? Some food. He had to have it now. 
But discipline teaches us to have self-control, to understand what is the right decision, and to understand also that it doesn't flow automatically. We must pause, think, choose, and make right decision. It teaches us to handle hardship. You know, and yesterday evening I was just processing. The Lord was showing me that, you know, like as a car, you know, it drives. The brakes are like for children, the discipline. And he was saying, even the very process of having a little child and you say, no, don't go there. No, do it this way. No. Just that alone is teaching the child that not everything I think is always correct. And that is something children need to learn. And even as you become adult, you understand that, look, I need to think about what I'm doing because it might not be the right thing. It also sets them up to hear God speak and speak to them and guide them because they understand the reality that not everything that comes to my mind may be good for me or good for the community or just good at all. And so he's saying, this quick gratification that indiscipline carries will lead you into problems. And this is extremely important to know because we see it in our society. Sometimes when we look at even some of the, the, the millennials, and the truth is, you know, we can't blame them. It is the parents. It is my age group. Because of what we went through, we overcompensated in our children. We say, I want to give them all that I did not have. And, but, but in the process, we fail to give them the tools that come through discipline. And some of them, you look at them, them wishy-washy, lack resilience, can't take much. The slightest thing, them fall. The slightest hardship, them frazzle out. You look at them sometime on the job. The slightest thing a boss said to them, them in pieces. Them can't stand up and be strong because they're not accustomed to having that kind of resistance in their lives. As parents, we need to correct that. We need to correct it for the next generation. We need to ensure that we bring up children who are balanced. Do you know that you can discipline your child to be imbalanced? I've seen it. Even in university, I had friends there. The only thing they were disciplining was the academ academics. They knew nothing else. The academia, straight A's. They know what to do. But tell them to do anything else in life. Social misfits, just a wreck. We need to ensure that children are balanced. And you know, this is something I thank my mother for. The other day I call her and I tell her thanks. Not only, yeah, she did rough. But she did the best she could based on how she knew it. Now I need to do, know better and do better. But the truth is that she ensured that I was balanced. So I had to do well in school. It was required. As little as she had, we make, she make sure we have all the books. And she says, study, you sit on our foot. And she will all beat you for spell. But in addition to that... <laughs> she has been an abused child. <laughs> but I am strong and resilient. <laughs> I don't get faced easily. But the thing is, I would have to come home every evening, reach for my particular time. Yes, Erica. And... I don't know why she's including Erica in this figure. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know. We had to reach... I had to reach home on time every evening because I had to go home and cook. So I had to learn from early how to cook, learn how to run a house. If I don't reach home early, in time is a problem. But she was teaching me to be balanced in all the areas of my life. So I am cooking and I'm reading the book up on top of it. I can't tell her I can't cook because I have an exam. Hello? <laughs> Try find a way to do it. Do the two together because she's not raising no wishy-washy picnic. Praise the Lord. <laughs> I, I did not cook. <laughs> I just making you know. Right? Um, so, 
one of the things we need to do is look at our lives and see if our lives has this discipline. We need to examine our lives and say, do I have poor self-control? Am I too impulsive? Maybe you didn't have a parent that got created that sort of discipline for you. I want you to hear that it is never too late in the Lord. Amen. That, that if you need discipline at this time, you can go to the Heavenly Father who will, who will help you, He will teach you, He will show you how to live a disciplined life if you will allow it. Yes. It's obvious you know, that discipline just makes all the difference in the world. We're talking to a friend of ours. And her daughter is millennial, but her daughter came up in a disciplined environment. She got a job at a company, and the, the girl is just getting one promotion after the next. Why? She's different. Yes. Yes. She just understands. Yeah. We are setting up our children, and we need to set them up to succeed. So let's look. I'm going to give you, we are going to give you three points on how to discipline. We have to discipline like God disciplines. Everything God does is out of love. Pastor Jones said that already. And we, when discipline, when done, done properly, is good for the person. And a loving parent inflicts temporary di discomfort on their children to spare them long-term disaster. So the first thing we want to write down is this. Write this down. Discipline with real love. Psalm 29 says this. Correct your children and you will be proud. How many people want to be proud of them children? It says, and they will give you satisfaction. You see, remember that discipline is to teach, to instruct, to, to, to guide. So before we move to punishment, we have to create the environment where discipline can flourish. The environment where behavior can be positive in life. And there are three things we need to do to create that environment. The first thing we need to do is we need to fill the attention bucket of the children. Children need attention that is pure and simple. And they have an attention bucket. It's an emotional block bucket that they need to be filled up like every day. And, and when we, we fill the emotional bucket, we get a positive response from our children. But when we don't, we're not positively filling the attention bucket, the children, because they need attention, just behave negatively. Because to a child, negative attention or positive attention is the same. Active. Attention. Yeah. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. so, so sometimes children behave bad just because they want your attention. They don't know any different. You know. they, don't have the, they don't have the capability to reason like how we have it. They just know they need this thing and they're acting off impulse. So before they do that, we give them the attention they need. And this is not talking about spending 24-7 with them. It means just a few minutes a day where they have your attention for themselves. Mm -hmm. And they are doing something with them that they love. And the, 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 the research shows that when we do that, they, they react more positively to you. They cooperate with you and are less likely to go off into negative things. The second one is take time for training. Now, the best way to discipline your child is to help them to make better choices. And the only way you're going to do that is where you teach them the correct behavior and response. Teach them what is wrong from right. And teach them in a way that they can hear you. So... Do it calmly. Don't, don't be shouting because sometimes just the shouting, they totally miss what you're trying to say. And very importantly, model the behavior you like to see in your children. And remember that there are some things that are better caught than taught. So we have to make sure that we are consistent. Remember I spoke to you some time ago that parenting starts with the parent. We cannot be saying something and doing the opposite. You mustn't tell lie. Somebody come to the gate to you. Tell him me not here. <laughs> it's inconsistent. It doesn't work. It literally doesn't work. Because things are better caught than taught. Right? The third one is set limits and stick to them. Now, we know we're very busy. It's a busy life. And it can be difficult to be consistent, you know, with your schedule. 
But the truth is the children thrive when they have structure and they know their boundaries. So when the expectations are clearly communicated in advance, children have a framework to work within. Now, this doesn't mean that you have to go overboard with a lot of rules, but just do what works for your family. Pick the things that is most important. Be clear about it. And, what hap and be clear about what happens when persons break the rules. Make sure that everyone understands the consequences ahead of time and that the discipline is related to the misbehavior. Boundaries provide security. And children know that they are safe within boundaries. And when the boundaries now are violated or when the child misbehaves, then we give, cor give real correction. And part of the reason why we did this together is because we want, we want it to be demonstrated that if, you, if, if there are two parents in the home, the parents have to be in one accord. Mm -hmm. So, let us say something happened on the moment and and Joan corrected the child in a way that I did not like. Which has happened. <laughs> Before the child, I am back in that way to the hill. Is everybody with me? One away now. I might call her one side and say, what have you done? That has but happened. The child <laughs> <laughs> but the child will never see the disunity. Is everybody with me? The child is, not, is just not exposed to that, to that. You see, discipline your children while there is hope, Proverbs 9 says. Otherwise, you will ruin their life. Your lack of discipline can ruin your child. Mm -hmm. You see, if the child is guilty of wrongdoing, if he's guilty of a rebellious attitude, we need to discipline, we need to bring the correction while there is hope. We have to lead them in the right way. And if we neglect it, we are actually giving in to the child's foolishness and their rebellion. We have to deal with the wrong when it occurs. We have to, we have to make it adequate so that they can learn that, that wrongdoing is not permitted. We have to give each appropriate correction and, and punishment. In other words, the punishment must match the crime. <laughs> right? Your child must learn to respect authority. The child must learn to obey. You don't just sort of throw it off and say, boy, I can't deal with my five-year-old or I can't deal with my teenager. You have to stay at it until the child gets the message. And heaven knows it is uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Some of the times the decisions you have to make is, is, is rough stuff. But, you know, parenting is not for cowards. And the truth is that if we need professional help, go and get professional help. There's no shame in this thing, you know. Right? Just go and get it. You see, we have to, we have, and, and we have to just be consistent. If the child is to study and the phone is a burden, you know, sometimes the phone starts to just attack you. <laughs> if the phone is a burden, help them. Just say, if you refuse to study, I will have to lift this burden <laughs> from you until you can. Is everybody with me? Our children are our greatest gift. They are a gift from God. And we have to steward them in a way that pleases the Lord. So we have to work with the Lord in the disciplining. Psalm Proverbs 22 gives us a very important instruction. It says, every child is full of foolishness. How many people know that? <laughs> but punishment, praise the name of the Lord, will get rid of it. Punishment and discipline <laughs> is moral correction. It has the idea of inflicting pain in order to, to associate for them pain and wrong. So the child learns two simple um, but yet essential facts. Wrong brings pain. Right brings affirmation. Pause. This is important, you know, because you're setting up your relationship with God. Mm -hmm. So one of the challenges we have sometimes as church is that people don't treat God with the kind of respect 
and all. And that can be set up mm -hmm. from parenting. Is everybody with me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Sorry. Go on. So even as you are disciplining for the wrong, you need to affirm when they get things right. Yes. To say, I like when you did that. You know, boy, you're so mature. And it, is, it must be clear and just what you do. When they understand this, you are empowering them to choose, to choose punishment or pleasantry. Now, um, Sister Andrea had shared with me this formula that she knows work. Um, brilliant when I, when I heard it, because it has a mechanism for justice and mercy in it. It makes it clear to everyone what is expected, and it also empowers the child to determine if, when they get punishment. It puts it in their hand. Now, the rule is, if I see you doing something wrong, I'm going to be counting from five to zero. Not from one to five, because one to five puts a picture in their head of infinity. Five to zero means at zero, there's nowhere else to go. <laughs> and zero means, if you make me reach zero, you're going to either get the wooden spoon, a belt, or you're going to go in a corner. But whatever zero means, you and them must be clear on that. So what it does is it builds self-esteem. Because the child knows, I can determine whether I get punishment. So you just sit it five, four, some of them wait until they reach one. But still, nonetheless, there's going to be no whipping or no nothing because they don't make it reach zero. And that's a really good tool because it is clear to the child that the power is in their hand. But the thing is, when you're doing it, you have to follow through. <laughs> <laughs> We have a chorus here. And also, <laughs> you have to follow through. It cannot be just a threat. Because if the child recognizes that all this is, is a threat and there's no consequence, after a while, them going, it's like they're going to have you over a stool. And by escaping due punishment, the child's corrupt nature, which I'm already born with, moves the child to unacceptable behavior and then the, it molds and establish evil behavior in their lives. So you have to be consistent in your discipline. Proverbs 13, 24 says, If you do not punish your children, you don't love them. But if you love your children, you will correct them. And we saw the same thing in the Hebrew passage earlier, where it says that the Lord disciplined those he loved. So you see, the scripture is consistent. So when a parent gives a child, when a parent gives a child his own way and yields more as the child demands it, the child begins to think he can get anything he by demanding it. And in reality, the parent is not demonstrating love for his child, but ease for himself. Diligent discipline demands time and sacrifice. Now, the third one is that discipline to teach wisdom. And we see in Proverbs 29, verse 15, that we must raise our children. It says this, to discipline a child produces wisdom. But a mother is disgraced by an undisciplined child. God's order is a way of discipline. And parents have been given children and we are agents of the discipline that the Lord would want for our children. But as we punish, we need to let them know why. Children need to understand why they got into trouble. Because this combination of punishment and teaching produces wisdom. Punishment alone may make them be obedient. But when you educate them, they become wise about their folly. Amen. Yeah. You see, a child that is not restrained does as he pleases, and he is unruly as a child and grows up to be an unruly parent. And what some of us think is that, then we grow it out, man. 
or, or as they learn how to reason, they will train. That is not what happens on the ground. The scripture clearly says, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, it, it comes with training. If he just runs free and is impulsive, eventually he's going to bring shame to his mother and his father. As a result, you know, what happens when you discipline your child? We read it already. Discipline your child and they will give you peace of mind and make you glad. Mm-hmm. And re- just the amount of time just the discipline in the Proverbs is an indication of just the necessity of discipline. And yes, the discipline must be age appropriate. Yes, it must be... Um, it must be abusive. Yes, it must, must match the temper. The temper must not. Must not. What we say? Must be abusive. Yes. It Praise must. the Lord. When a man finds a wife. Yes. It must not be abusive. 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 It must, must <laughs> match the temperament of the child. It has to match the circumstance. It must be done in love and all of that kind of thing. But the truth is that if there is an absence, you know, I, I just rem- remembered something. I remember talking to somebody one day, um, a young lady who was brought up in her family. She was her daddy's princess, and that's a great thing. Every girl should be daddy's princess. But for her, what did that mean? It meant that he allowed her, he gave her everything she wanted. There were no boundaries, there were no constraints. Anything she said, she got. But then she got married. Praise the, the name, name of, of the, the Lord. Lord. Yes. Do you understand what happened? Now, if you want to know what happened with a princess, a princess is perhaps one of the most disciplined person there is. Look at what has been happening now with, what's, what's her name? Megan. She is now within the courts of the queen. Think of the amount of discipline that she has now had to put on her life. Princesses are brought up with discipline and decorum and understand limits. So that in the case I'm talking about, when she get married or her husband get hell, because everything she wants, she must get. As she thinks about it, it must happen. Do you understand what I'm saying? Now that was created from her father. So that's why it is so important that as parents, we discipline our children. I'm telling you, the truth is that it is not easy to raise children. How many people can say amen to that? It is not difficult to, it is difficult to raise children who will live up to godly values. Everything around us fights against it. The devil fights against it. The world fights against it. Quite frankly, sometimes our own flesh fights against it. I, was t- I quoted it already. James Dobson wrote, wrote a book. Parenting is not for cowards. Right? He said, parenting is tough. It can be tough to look at your child in the eye and discipline them. But if we truly love them, mm-hmm. if we truly want the best of them, discipline is something that we'll have to embrace. And it's going to have to be appropriate, etc. And when the child senses that the, per- the parent is putting limits on them, they interpret it as love. Mm-hmm. So remember, you know, we're not talking about abuse here. They, it's, it's reinforcing to them. It gives them stability and security. So I read an article about some psychologists who came up with a, with a new thought, right? And they thought that fences on the playgrounds, like in America, fences on the playgrounds restrict the child's creativity and spontaneity. That, that it, 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 the child would, when they see the fence, they, they don't feel free to run up and down. So a consensus was made to remove all the fences so the children wouldn't feel confined. And the exact opposite occurred. The research, researchers found that without the fences, the child feel inhibited. They didn't feel as free. What they did was huddled together in the middle of the playground and they showed signs of insecurity. When the fences were replaced, the children were freer, greater enthusiasm and, and just running up and down. You see, here's a shot. We all need boundaries. Yes. We all need boundaries. Yes. 
We need the boundaries under which we can operate. And everything in life functions that way. Mm -hmm. Even God gives us boundaries. Yeah. You see, we need to secure our children's future. Mm -hmm. It is in our hands. And if we, if we never got it, so we don't know what to do, we have a heavenly father who is more than happy to do it for you. The scripture says, if you lack wisdom, ask God. We're not talking about being harsh. We're not, we're not talking about anything like that. We're talking about creating an environment where discipline can function. Mm -hmm. That's before we even think about punishment. Mm -hmm. But the truth is that once you create that environment, we are training them for a lifetime, not only earthly lifetime, but heavenly lifetime. We are training them so that they will last the test of time. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand. Hi again. I hope that today's message was an inspiration to you. I pray that you'd experience God's best in your life. If you made a first time decision for Jesus today, I encourage you to get involved in a local Bible believing church. Also, drop us a line at info at hetransforms.me and I'll send you our book. First Steps for the New Believer. It is free of cost. Additionally, if you are in the Kingston and Metropolitan area, feel free to come and join us on Sundays. You can check our website for further details. God bless you real good.